In this video, I'm going to talk about Kubernetes caps. So what are caps and why do we need them? As Kubernetes gets more and more popular, people have lots of different ideas about how it can be improved. And we need a standard procedure to collect ideas, document them, identify why it needs to go in on the first place and discuss them and implement them and then also make sure that it goes through uh, the different release cycles of alpha, beta, and finally GA. And that's where Kubernetes enhancement proposals or CAPs come in. Now, if you ever wanted to know more about why a big change was made in Kubernetes, for example, recently we had a major change where service tokens were not being automatically created. Instead, you had to create your own manually. And if you wanted to know the motivation behind why this change was made, then you should be looking at the associated cap. I'll show you how to review that particular cap later in this video. So say you have an idea for a new feature that would make it easier for people to use Kubernetes or a new way to improve the security of the system. You would write a cap to explain your idea and then other people could read and give their own suggestions or feedback. The CAP process makes it easy for users to track ongoing development and improvement efforts, as well as providing a way for Kubernetes to stay up to date with changes in the industry. So CAPs are a way for people to share their ideas and work together to make Kubernetes even better. If you have worked with projects on GitHub as it is, or Kubernetes, you know that you have GitHub issues where you can report bugs and create feature requests. Um, and then why do we need CAPs? Um, why not just use GitHub issues? Well, first, CAPs provide a standard way for members of the community to propose and discuss ideas, which makes it easier for everyone to understand and participate in the process. Secondly, CAPs allow for more detailed and structured discussions, which can help the community to more carefully consider and evaluate proposed changes. GitHub issues are not enough for SIGs to signal their approval or uh, rejection of a proposed change. Anybody can open an issue at any time and managing changes across multiple releases is cumbersome as you'll have to label and, and milestone each one and it needs to be up updated and each release changes everything. And this leads to a growing number of open issues in Kubernetes features, which then needs to be managed. And additionally, it can be difficult to search through the text within an issue and uh, the flat hierarchy of issues can limit navigation and categorization. Now, all caps follow a standard naming convention. They have a four digit number followed by a short um, and descriptive title, and every cap must be properly documented. It must start with a summary followed by a set of goals and non-goals, which clearly defines what the motivation is behind this proposal. And then a user story as part of the proposal along with risks and mitigations. And as any feature request, it must have test plans and graduation criteria. Now, caps are grouped by SIGs. SIG, if you don't know yet, are special interest groups for Kubernetes. So Kubernetes SIG are special interest groups that deal with different aspects of um, the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem. For example, there is a SIG for applications, cluster lifecycle, data management, networking, storage, and security. And each SIG has its own directory where caps related to its area of focus are stored. So SIG members vote on whether or not to accept a proposal. And if it is accepted, the change is implemented in the future releases of Kubernetes. And this process ensures that proposed changes are carefully considered before being accepted into the system. For example, uh, this cap on Kubernetes dry run that was created over two years ago details the need for the dry run feature, which we all know today is very beneficial. It helps send requests to the endpoints and see you know, what would have happened without having it actually happening. As you can see, this proposal includes a test plan, uh, the graduation criteria, and a proposal that details what works or on what API endpoints will have this implemented, and also how it will be implemented. Below it, also includes examples of how it could be used with the kubectl command line utility. Now, this is another interesting cap that was recently released called the 1205 bound service account tokens. And this cap was proposed to mitigate some of the security concerns 
with the way tokens were provisioned. So as you might know already, JWT or JSON Web Tokens are like the wild west of authentication. Once anyone gets their hands on, on them, they can pretend to be whoever they want. So this is because JWTs are not tied to a specific audience in this case. On top of that, the way that service account tokens are stored and delivered in Kubernetes is like leaving a giant target on the control plane's back for attackers to aim at. And if a JWT token does get stolen, it's like a lifetime supply of free access to whatever it was protecting, unless you manually rotate the keys, which nobody does because it's a huge pain. Plus, using JWTs like this requires creating a ton of secrets, which is just not scalable. So this particular cap introduced a token request API that will generate tokens on demand bound to an audience with an expiry date. The cap then goes on to proposing how this will be implemented and some example code showing this in action. There are test plans defined as well. And below you have graduation criteria that explains how each feature within this cap will progress to GA. The token request API goes out as alpha for version 1.10, then beta for version 1.12 and GA in version 1.20. Every cap goes through the following life cycle. At the provisional state, the cap is proposed and is being defined. At this stage, the SIG has accepted that this work must be done. And after the approvers have approved the cap for implementation, it moves to the implementable state and then into the implemented state. If it's not being worked on, then it goes to the deferred state. And if approvers decide to not proceed with this cap, then it goes into the rejected state. Withdrawn is when the author withdraws the cap and replaced is when the cap is replaced by a new cap. Well, that's a high level overview of Kubernetes enhancement proposals. If you have any questions, don't forget to drop them in the comments below. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos like this. Until next time, goodbye.